Okay, I'm back, y'all, and divinely grateful risings. How are y'all doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic and amazing day. Welcome to Bible Clarity. Um, y'all, we are in the book of 1 Samuel, and we're on 1 Samuel 27 and 28. I had to get myself together, child. I had to get myself together for a sake. Okay, I'm back. Listen, <laughs> we're in the book of 1 Samuel. If you are new to the Bible Clarity community, welcome. We are so happy and so grateful that you are here, okay? We are here to read the Bible. We're reading the, on a mission to read the Bible two chapters at a time. We're here to read the Word, discuss the Word, and build relationship with the Lord. Um, before I even start this, I'm going to say this because if it comes into my spirituals, I'm going to say it. I don't care. If, let me tell you something. For whoever this message is for, the enemy, as you can come on, God, as you continue to move into success, as you begin to grow and the Lord begins to elevate you and expand you, just know that the enemy is going to try to attack you and he thinks he is going to win, but he is not. God has the final say. God is the final word. So even if the enemy tries to attack what it is that the Lord has blessed you to create, just know that if the Lord put it into, into your vision, if he made it happen, if he made the creation come to fruition, the enemy can't stop it, okay? Let's talk about David among the Philistines. That's where we are in 1 Samuel 27 and 28. I'll tell y'all more about this um, as it as it develops. I'll tell y'all about it all. If you, whatever day this is, you'll probably know about it because this particular video is coming out on Wednesday and I beat and went live multiple times since then. Um, so y'all will know what that is about. But anyway, or let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's talk about David among the Philistines. I feel this in my spirituals. David among the Philistines, okay? Y'all, like the live, share the live, share the love. Drop something in the chat that you're grateful for this morning. I am grateful for peace. Thank you, Lord. I need to start doing this. I am grateful for peace. I am grateful that no matter what the enemy tries to throw at you when you are stepping into your purpose, that the Lord has the last laugh. He has the final say, and he will make it happen. So don't worry about it. If I'm not worried about it. I'm going to let the Lord do his work, okay? Um, drop something in the chat that you're grateful for this morning. Let's get into it, y'all. Um, David among the Philistines, okay? David among the Philistines. So we just got done talking about David has spared Saul's life once again. He spared him in the cave of Adullam. Is that what it's called? Adullam. The first time he spared his life. Um, Samuel just died as well, y'all, in what we just read. David married Abigail. So a lot has happened in the last couple of chapters. Um, David, he, he, he snuck down into Saul's camp and said, listen, you got these folks around you who's supposed to be protecting you, but I, I still was able to come in, penetrate your defenses, right? Um, I was still able to come in and... I could have killed you if I wanted to, but I didn't. And so here we are. We finna see what's happening. Saul told David that he could have came back. And David was like, no, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? The Lord gives his own rewards. Come on, Lord. So David among the Philistines. Let's go. Here we go. But David kept thinking to himself, someday Saul is going to get me. The best thing I can do is escape to the Philistines. Then Saul will stop hunting for me in Israelite territory, and I will finally be safe. So David took his 600 men and went over and joined Achish, son of Maok, the king of Gath. David and his men and their family settled there with Achish at Gath. David brought his two wives along with him, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, Nabal's widow from Carmel. Word soon reached Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he stopped hunting for him. One day, said, one day David said to Achish, if it is all right with you, we would rather live in one of the country towns instead of here in the royal city. So Achish gave him the town of Ziglag, which still belongs to the kings of Judah to this day. And they lived there among the Philistines for a year and four months. Hmm. 16 months, huh? Okay. David and his men spent their time raiding the Gezerites, the, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, people who had lived near Shur toward the land of Egypt since ancient times. 
David did not leave one person alive in the villages he attacked. He took the sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, camels, and clothing before returning home to see King Akish. Where did you make your raid today? Akish would ask. And David would reply, against the south of Judah, the Jeremelites and the Kenites. No one was left alive to come to Gath and tell where he had really been. This happened again and again while he was living among the Philistines. Akish believed David and thought him to himself, by now the people of Israel must hate him bitterly. Now he will have to stay here and serve me forever. Okay. Saul consults a medium. <laughs> here we go. Saul consults a medium. About that time. The Philistines mustered their armies for another war with Israel. King Achish told David, you and your men will be expected to join me in battle. Very well, David agreed. Now you will see for yourself what we can do. Then Achish told David, I will make you my personal bodyguard for life. Meanwhile, Samuel had died and all Israel had mourned for him. He was buried in Ramah, his hometown, and Saul had banned and Saul had banned from the land of Israel all mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. The Philistines set up their camp at Shunem, and Saul gathered all the army of Israel and camped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the vast Philistine army, he became frantic with fear. He asked the Lord, what should he do? But the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by the prophets. Saul then said to his advisors, find a woman who is a medium so I can go and ask her what to do. His advisors replied, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself by wearing ordinary clothing instead of royal robes. Then he went to the woman's home at night, accompanied by two of his men. I have to talk to a man who has died. He said, will you call up his spirit for me? Are you trying to get me killed? The woman demanded. You know that Saul has outlawed all the mediums and all who consult the spirits of the dead. Why are you setting a trap for me? But Saul took an oath in the name of the Lord and promised, as surely as the Lord lives, nothing bad will happen to you for doing this. Finally, the woman said, well, whose spirit do you want me to call up? Call up Samuel, Saul replied. Oh, Lord. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, you've deceived me. You are Saul. Don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a God coming up out of the earth, she said. What does he look like, Saul asked. He is an old man wrapped in a robe, she replied. Saul realized it was Samuel and he fell to the ground before him. Why have you disturbed me by calling me back, Samuel asked Saul. Because I am in deep trouble, Saul replied. The Philistines are at war with me, and God has left me and won't reply by prophets or dreams. So I have called you for you to tell me what to do. But Samuel replied, why ask me, since the Lord has left you and has become your enemy? The Lord has done just as he said he would do. He has torn the kingdom from you and given it to your rival. David, the Lord has done this to you today because you refuse to carry out his fierce anger against the Amalekites. What's more, the Lord have, will have the Lord will hand you and the army of Israel over to the Philistines tomorrow, and you and your sons will be here with me. The Lord will bring down the entire army of Israel in defeat. My goodness. Saul fell full length on the ground, paralyzed with fright because of Samuel's words. He was also faint with hunger, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. When the women saw, when the woman saw how distraught he was, she said, Sir, I obeyed your command at the risk of my life. Now do what I said and let me give you a little something to eat so you can regain your strength for the trip back. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Let me give you some sustenance so you can go on about your business now. What? But Samuel refused to eat anything. Then his advisors joined the woman, urging him to eat. So he finally yielded and got up from the ground and sat on the couch. 
The woman had been fattening a calf, so she hurried out and killed it. She took some flour, kneaded it into dough, and baked unleavened bread. She brought the meat, the meal to Saul and his advisors, and they ate it. Then they went out into the night. The end. Okay, the end. So, Saul then went and seen a medium <laughs> okay um who she because he wanted to talk to samuel who just died right so he went and consulted the medium david among the philistines of course we've been to get ready to read some more about this but david over there doing his thing he's he's stepping into power he's and he you know well he was killing the philistines not really the israelite people then but you know um Saul consults the medium she called up Samuel Samuel said listen the Lord had already told you that he was gonna give the kingdom to to David don't act like don't act like don't act brand new okay don't act brand new the, the Lord did exactly what he said he was going to do for disobedience right and so um as a result of that um here we are okay here we are y'all I'm, I'm gonna be reading this all day today anyway let's see come on isaiah 22 22 that's what then that, that message came up on by the time y'all see it was friday's message game time the number 22 22 message and i saw uriel yesterday creation okay get to creating it's time to create something um the flame of god the fire of god that's what 2222 means make sure y'all go look that number up or maybe you'll be seeing that number let's let's start with isaiah 2222 i will give him o m to the g that's what we were talking about on game time y'all this was when i was like 2222 the keys to the house of david OMG, OMG, y'all. And this is literally talking about y'all. We talk, okay, look, if you knew, welcome. We love, we, we so have so great when you here, y'all. If you have not watched Game Time, which is the message that I did on Friday, go watch that message. In that message, the number 2222 came up and we were talking about the keys, right? That the keys to the house of David. Was it that message, y'all? And the door closing doors. It may not even have been that one or was it the one on Thursday? And I don't remember what that one was. Anyway, and now literally we have Samuel telling Saul that he's giving the key, like they, the Lord has stripped the kingdom. He giving the keys to the house of David to David, like basically stripping the kingdom and giving it to, to David. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. We just talked about this the other day. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so truly grateful for closed doors and new open doors we are so grateful lord to be stepping into our position of power authority and royalty come on god power authority and royalty lord the position that you have given us not a position that we have created for ourselves but the mantles the positions that you said that we are going to step into lord we are so truly grateful thank you father god for closing doors behind us we said this the other day Thank you for closing the slam it, close it. Thank you for closing the doors behind us and that no one will be able to penetrate nor reopen those doors, including ourselves, okay? We are so truly grateful, Lord, for the new doors, the new opportunities that are opening up for us, Lord, the new paths that you are giving us to walk. Keep leading the way, Lord. Keep leading us along your paths and continue to order our steps. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not? see it. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Thank you, Father God, for creating these pathways, for sustaining us in our wilderness seasons, for making a way out of no way, Lord. Thank you that everything that we're doing is brand new, all new, everything, Lord. We are so truly grateful for something new. We are so truly grateful for new beginnings, for new opportunities, for new ways to create, for new ideas, for new wisdom, for new understanding, Lord. We're so 
grateful that we continue to have right relationship with you, that you continue to impart your wisdom, your truth, that you continue to give us clarity about the things that you would require of us in this season. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Thank you, Father God, that you keep giving us a reason to a demonstration of your power, Lord, that as long as we continue to give back to you everything that you blessed us with, that you, because you deserve it, Lord, that you will continue to bless us with even more than we ask for, than we can think, hope, dream, wish, or imagine. We are so truly grateful Lord, that we are shining with the light of the Lord, that there's nothing we're doing on our own, Lord, that, that this is not even us. It's it's your power, your might, your authority that shines through us, Lord, that allows us to be victorious and successful. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. Thank you, Lord. Come on, 1717. Thank you, Lord, that you we know that your truth is law and we are so truly grateful, Lord, that you're sending us into these new seasons, into these new areas, well equipped and prepared for the assignment. We're so truly grateful, Lord, that we know that because you continue to teach us and instruct us and lead us and guide us, Lord, that we will be safe. We are secure. We are protected. And we are grateful, Lord. We are so grateful that as we continue to walk with you, as we continue to walk in alignment with you, Lord, that you continue to just infuse us with love, with power, with, for the mission, for the assignment, for the people who are attached to our destiny, for the people whose lives you would allow us to bless. Father, we're so grateful that you find us worthy and capable of the mantles that you are giving us. We're so grateful that you find us worthy and capable of the positions and the mandates that you're stepping us into, Lord. We receive them and we continue to walk in truth, in your way, in your purpose. And we pray all of this in the loving and mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Anyway, Lord, I hope this helps somebody. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, hydrate your soul and things. Drink your water. Say your gratitude. Have a fantastic and an amazing day in purpose and on purpose. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Make sure you like the live, share the live, and share the love. Okay, I love y'all in real life. Bye, y'all. Thank you.